My name is Ethna Dodds and I am a third year PhD candidate here at the School of Law. Um, my research is focused on the evolution of the definition of rape in international criminal law with a particular focus on the appropriateness of the element of non-consent within a definition in the international criminal context. So I presented my paper um, entitled Prosecuting Rape in International Criminal Law Challenges and Possibilities at the Human Rights Centre seminar series for the PhD students. It is a part of a chapter from within my thesis, um, not the whole thesis in itself, and I focused on the International Criminal Court within that, whereas my thesis looks at a number of different international criminal tribunals as there's been a number of different definitions developed. I focused on the tribunal at the um, International Criminal Court and specifically the Katanga Judgment, which was given in 2014, and it clarified that the definition in the International Criminal Court will be one where the element of non-consent is not part of the definition and it is not for the prosecution to prove. So I thought that was quite significant in that it has set a precedent for how the International Criminal Court will proceed and I'm interested in how that's going to impact the other tribunals as well. My PhD is focused on rape within the international criminal context, so that's rape as a crime against humanity, a war crime or as genocide and I'm quite interested in how the crime is defined in that context and how it differs to the domestic definition where we don't necessarily have the context of mass violence. Generally in domestic law, while um, different jurisdictions have different definitions, the general understanding is that rape is non-consensual sex, so the main element that distinguishes sex between rape is the element of non-consent of the victim, whereas in the international criminal context there's been debate about how appropriate the focus on the non-consent of the victim is, given that the context of war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide have an, an inherent coercive environment in which any consent given may not be genuine consent. So therefore, there's been definitions developed where the focus is actually on the coercive environment and the coercive actions of the perpetrator, as opposed to the consent of the victim. I think the most exciting part is the part that I'm starting to develop um, in the thesis where I'm looking at how, while there is distinctions between the international criminal context and the domestic context, I'm quite interested in how the interaction between the domestic law and international law, how they inform each other and how potentially any developments made in the international criminal context may aid rape reform, rape reform within the domestic context or even asking the question, are the two, um, are the two areas too distinct? At the minute, um, there has been um, research looked at and some of the definitions, the first definition put forward in the Rwanda Tribunal, um, which was defined as rape, defined rape as a sexual invasion under um, course of circumstances, so it was quite a broad conceptual definition, and it ha has actually been used in civil cases in California and South Africa, um, so they have used that definition, whereas what is also quite interesting is the International Criminal Court has a complementarity regime, whereby domestic jurisdictions may um, preside over international crimes in their domestic courts rather than at an international court and there is questionable over whether the international court definition should be applied or whether a domestic definition should be applied. So there's quite a lot of interaction that's going on and that needs to be teased out.